Enforcement Committee, and we'll call this meeting to order. Uh, all members are present. Uh, Mr. Boyett, would you mind sure. having a prayer? <clears throat> Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for allowing us to come here tonight, dear Lord, to, to uh, study county business, the law enforcement here, dear Lord, and ask that we make decisions that's best for, best for our county. We ask that you bless each and every individual up here, dear Lord, and we ask that you bless the people that's out in the audience as well, dear Lord. Please help us to have a good Christmas. Thank you for all that you do for us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Next on the agenda be the uh, minutes approval of November 15th, 2022. Make that motion. A second. Okay. Yeah, that threw me for a loop there. Property and courthouse meetings. That's it. We're, we're all in favor say aye. Aye. I was thinking I was on the wrong agenda there for a minute. I was in the draw for the courthouse meetings. Yeah. That's what I was looking at. I got two of them, you know. <laughs> I was trying to figure out which one I'm supposed to be going by. All right, all right. Next uh, be the reports. Uh, first up will be at the animal control. Joseph. I don't have anything to add to the report. Um, had a few hurdles in the past couple months. Uh, it seems to me that three air units have went out, heat units. Uh, had one in place last week, getting one in place tomorrow, and then uh, three days ago, our kitchen and surgery area, air unit went out. So we're making it work. Uh, Ms. Rose brought us some heaters. Um, so we're just kind of making it work and uh, doing what we can. Over the past couple of days, uh, we filled the shelter back up, which is unfortunate, but we'll manage. Any questions for animal control? Any special events coming up that you're doing? Mm, not right now. I, I did um, try to get as many of the animals that we spayed and neutered a week ago. Um, a week ago, we did a spay and neuter day on Friday and Saturday. Um, we didn't have any animals in those two days. Um, we have gotten um, almost all of them except for six animals adopted or pulled from a rescue. So it's happening slowly. We're just bringing them in quicker than we can get them out. Um, I did, we did have some generous people come in and sponsor animals. That always helps. Um, they might not be able to have an animal themselves, but they are more than happy to pay the adoption fee and pay it forward. So kind of a Christmas event, we kind of do that. The, Couple days before Christmas to try to get as many hours as we can. Okay. So, good time. One other question, Jussie. Uh, what's your situation on the animals being outside with these frigid temperatures <laughs> coming in? Or you're talking about outside of the shelter, right? Yes, ma'am. Or are you talking in the shelter? Well, now that you don't have heat well, and air, both, I guess you might say. Probably I mean, hopefully that problem will be fixed tomorrow. Um, the outside animals, when we get out and down to temperatures like this, of course, we get many welfare checks, too. Yeah. Um, so all of our animals have bedding. They have doors that close. They have heaters that are on. Um, the inside, that heat's supposed to be fixed tomorrow. They're supposed to be there in the morning. As well as the county residents, um, I had put a post out on social media. You know, if anybody needed any help, they can get in touch with us. I have channels that I can reach out to and give an address, and they will take straw over there for them. Okay. Very good. Thank you. Thank you. Next up <laughs> is the Sheriff's Department's reports enclosed. Uh, I do not have a whole lot. You probably got about as much as I do due to the medical situation and as well as Christmas vacations, people not there, so I don't have a courtroom report or drug task force report. I do have Lieutenant Cook, uh, as Lieutenant and the Corrections, uh, and uh, Lieutenant uh, Prince. No, Ronald Prince. Administrator. Ronald Prince. Gentry. Are right under Ronald. And by the way, Lieutenant Cook. I know y'all have heard us talk recently about programs and uh, education with the prisoners. That seems to be part of that. Uh, not only 
had supervised on the night shift, but uh, he's a big part, and Sylvia can tell you on the, uh, on the training and trying to get him back on the right track. Uh, as you can see, we had 50, control 56,000 miles, 801 warrants served, uh, 181 arrests made, and I won't get into the specific specifics. This afternoon, about two hours ago, one of our officers just on being good law enforcement work got a car uh, stopped at the 231 gas station out there on the street, I think it is, and quite a good quantity of meth, as well as several pills, oxycodone, heavy duty pills, and uh, gun, loaded gun, uh, several things, so it was good police work on his part to uh, proud of him. Last week was a really tough week for us at the Sheriff's Department. We had, and this happens a lot of times in the holidays, I guess. I don't know what loneliness or what. We had some suicides and we had one standoff and you probably saw in the newspaper that was in War Trace that lasted thirty something hours and uh, could have really um, it did go, I mean, it didn't turn out good, but it could have gone a lot worse than what it did. Uh, I'd like to say, while it's still too embarrassing, I guess, but the Becker County Fire Department, the Chief Thomas, and, and all of them were supportive throughout the entire night. They, uh, whatever we needed, they pretty much got it for us, and even went as far as to uh, getting after it was finally over the next day, uh, brought in their fans to uh, suck out as much as we could, the uh, tear gas and things like that. Uh, bringing us stuff, uh, lighting, it, it, was, it was a big help, and I appreciate their help on that. Um, that's about all I can come up with right now, unless you have some questions, I'll try to answer that. Have any questions for the sheriff? Sheriff, one question. Um, first of all, again, I appreciate you. You'll hear me probably say that a lot, but I appreciate you and all the men and women that are, that are serving to keep us uh, safe and protected. And just a quick question as I, as I talk to, to folks, sometimes the, the phrase comes up, response time, response time. Is that something that, that you all manage from a, you know, maybe from a, any, from any standpoint in regards to maybe an emergency response time versus just a basic call response time? Or <clears throat> well, when you say manage, I, I don't guess, I don't know how you would really manage it. Obviously, if it's an emergency situation, we're going to try to get there faster by probably running 33, which is flight sirens or whatever, yes. than we would if we were just going to take a report or something. Uh, you know, our officers stay out there as much as they can, but of course they do have to come in and do reports and things like that. And we try to keep it spread out. But the problem sometimes, and I guess it is our biggest problem with response time, is we're getting calls and we're answering calls, and you might have four, maybe at most six deputies covering 480 square miles. And, got one in wheel and calls in Beach Pro, you've got a ways to go. Uh, and if everybody else is tied up, he might be the man. Uh, so I, I really, <laughs> I don't know how you can really manage that other than just try to get to them with what you've got as quick as you can. Yes, yeah, sir. But yeah, it, it can be a problem sometimes. Sometimes it's not. And, and actually, nighttime, you can usually get to them quicker than daytime because of the traffic. Not a fraction of the traffic, especially late at night, as it is during the day. And that's always a uh, big hindrance, especially if you have to jump through the Shelbyville. But, uh, yes. <laughs> I hope I answered your question. Well, yes, sir, and I, I appreciate it. And, and the question comes more from, uh, um, you know, just are, are we resourced appropriately? If, if response times weren't what they should be, we could possibly. You know, would you look to add resources or or or, or redo certain things? So it's um, it's just a it's just a, a question that I that I hear often, and I thought I would. Yeah. Well, and 
quite honestly, if you're waiting on the fire department or yes, the sheriff's sir. department, a minute seems like an hour. Yes, sir. But I do know sometimes, you know, I, I wish we could get quicker than what we do. But again, you have to do with what you got. Do, what is the do you know the national standards off the top of your head for our population no, I, or or your geographic coverage? There are standards for yeah, that, but and I, I, fall, I feel sure we fall way short of the national standards. And, uh, yeah, and financially would be how you would address that. Yeah, yeah that's just like used to, unless it has changed. The FBI said you should have one officer for every five hundred people. Mm -hmm. well, we got fifty thousand. <laughs> well, I mean, then to your point mr mayor it would be it would be good just to know that information Absolutely. that way we can Absolutely. you know better prepare and, and 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 as those conversations happen um out in the public we would be able to, to not only entertain but with an educated uh, conversation be able to to get those folks up to speed so thank you for taking the questions sure and i will say this and y'all heard me say this before and i don't want to sound like a broken record but the ones of us that are involved in emergency services, when catastrophe happens, no matter whose side of the field it's on, you will see all these department heads come together and departments. You know, Chris has been a part of it. David, Josie, you were out there the other night. Uh, you see this whole team come together and do a part. And it's not necessarily my game. But it, everybody, it takes all of us. And, and if you stood back and you watched these people do their jobs, you would be very proud of them. We have an amazing service here with what we've got. Yes, sir. So. All right, any further questions for Sheriff's Department? Next, we have EMA, David. I don't have anything to add new to the report. I'm we have a couple things that I want to talk about. Um, we're working, which we just came out, the schedule just came out uh, this past week. We're working with the school system and intruder drills. And uh, this is the first time we've had all the schools involved. It's going to go through January and February. So we'll take our group out, Mark's part of that also, uh, and uh, evaluate the intruder drills that they do. It's something that the school, uh, school system and um, so we're going to be a part of that. Uh, we did um, a drill Monday, I think it was, mm -hmm. uh, at Central High School. We actually did a bomb threat out there. So uh, uh, we're starting to kick off that part. So just a, an update. I know we were talking about we've worked with schools in our, in our uh, report. And that's just to give you an idea. We're going to have all through January and all through February. And we'll be touching every school in the county. So uh, another thing is, um, I wanted to say something about is, so Tima brought to us a uh, a new product that they came out with. It's called a critical infrastructure dashboard, which is technically used for their tier one or places that are tier two um, uh, businesses that has hazmat type of materials. It's, it's geared towards that. However, we can add our uh, public safety or fire halls or EMS halls and things like that. I'm looking at ways to maybe tweak that a little bit and we can use it here for things when we have uh, incidents in areas to see if we have any type of critical uh, infrastructure around their schools, uh, things like that. Uh, so we're in the process of looking at that too, something that has came up and I'm always trying to figure out ways to uh, use products in, in different ways than so that and that's another way we're talking about. Uh, the last thing I'll say is our as far as our new building, uh, we have uh, we had some painting done, that's done. We had some carpet uh, cleaning done and that uh, is uh, winding down. So we're uh, looking at the process of starting to move maybe some furniture in. We don't have our fence uh, up yet for security uh, like we'd like it, but that's in the process of being going through the motion to uh, get that uh, get that put up so we can get our equipment moved that uh, that we use. So we're making progress uh, during this holiday. Uh, we've spent the last couple of days 
dealing with the new building and along with the things that we are responsible for day to day. So um, we're, we're working on that. So we're, we're looking uh, looking good on that. It should not be very long before we'll be able to move into that. That's all I got. Any questions? I will tell you too, you know, with this bad weather coming in, David and the fire department, I spoke with Mark Clanton and several of us were already working for that plan, what if, you know, we're what if, and it, we've got the warming shelters, we're, Tammy, I think, has been in touch with them, getting all that lined up, because we don't know what's going to happen, you know, how the weather is around here, you know, he'll predict. We're not going to get about a half inch, and we woke up and seen six inches on the ground, but hopefully that doesn't happen. But the wind chill is going to be the big thing, and like I say, we've been working, trying to get ourselves prepared for that over the Christmas holidays. So. And I appreciate you saying it. Yes, we're uh, talking about the homeless. I think Castle Ministries are going to open up for them. Um, mm -hmm. We have some place to go when the cold weather does come in. Also, we have been in touch with Fairhead Church uh, already. If we have some type of issues with power or whatever, we have to uh, uh, find uh, some shelter, some place for folks to go until they can get that uh, fixed. So we'll, uh, we've will we already got that ball rolling. And, uh, What's the location of the Castle Ministry? It's right there on Madison Street. I don't know. Does anybody know the It's across the street from Arby's. Uh, yeah. Oh, it's a thrift store. Okay. Right across no fix it shop. Yeah. Right. <laughs> almost when you turn off. The yeah. main it's a long time. Right side you know, you know. Right? <laughs> You're starting to tell. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Brown. And uh, also, we've touched base with the Shovel Police Department on that. Also, Brian uh, uh, Cruz and they know that when they come across folks like that, uh, that uh, on calls or they're doing their patrol or whatever. Any further questions for EMA? Mark, thank you for sending out the weather report to the commissioners. Well, that's generated through David's through office, David's and we kind of pass it around, and yeah. we set through, Brian and I set through those weather briefings. Matter of fact, we'll have one Thursday to get the latest and greatest. And so, but try to keep Thanks. our people informed anyway of what's going on. Uh, next is uh, probation. There he is. I have nothing really to add to the report uh, other than software upgrade skill. You know, it's so good. I've heard the developers this month and got a few reports that actually when I got the officers coming out some of the work time. So uh, I knew going in that it's going to take time to get everything I want from uh, ISOMs. But I'm, I'm slowly starting to get it. And I, I expect that the to more Any questions? Hearing none, and then let's see. Did they take you off my list, or did they move you? Or yeah, okay. Well, we'll we'll hear from juvenile detention. Is there anything that you're lacking that's needed? Okay. Any questions for probation? Juvenile. I mean juvenile. <laughs> She's not on my list. <laughs> that's the term. That's all right. That's all right. That's all right. That's all right. We know. We know you. <laughs> that's all right. All right, that's all the reports. So I need a motion to approve reports as presented. Oh, wait a minute. He's under new business, old business. He's coming up next.
Yeah, he's up next. <clears throat> uh, I'll make a motion to approve. Okay. Second. Second. Got a motion and second. All in favor, say aye. 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 Uh, other reports for information only, which we have none. Next will be the uh, Sheriff's Department tablet bid, which was just a three-year contract. This reason it came before this committee, and we deferred it so we could look at that. And I think everybody was emailed the uh, link to look at that. I had I sent it to Linda as well. Uh, I talked, sent it to Josh Carney, IT department, and he's very familiar with. Correct me if I'm wrong, Austin, but he, you know. They said that they work with that vendor already, and they're very reputable and good people to work with. And I think Linda. I'd like to just throw out one sentence or two about us. I, I read through it. I don't know if it's the same. And it's like a lot of programs. You, you really don't know until you get in there and use it. And mm -hmm. do, but they had good uh, feedback from some places that had. But I had a lady at the central office who knows more than I do about what some of these programs look at it and. She said she saw no problems at all. And again, you know, you use it and may have to tweak it and see how you like it. If you don't like it, don't forget it. Mr. Mayor, did uh, Robert, I, 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 did, I meant to reach out to him, but I didn't. But he's okay with that contract? As far as you know, yeah, my understanding was uh, it was a formality issue because yeah. it was greater than one year. Yeah. So there, it brings it to the body. And it's, it's no financial at all to the county at all so so we'll open floor for questions and you want to give him a Ms. do Cook a presentation do you, I think he has do one. you want to speak on on this program specific questions or anything um ronald actually uh administrator Prince, he actually had planned on coming here tonight and he had a family emergency so he called me at the last minute and said, hey, can you, uh, you know, come to the meeting and answer any questions they might have? Um, uh, sure, I will. Yeah. <laughs> um, the, biggest, the biggest issue that I can see with tablets for most people is um, why would you offer inmates tablets, right? I mean, they, the general public looking at that would think, why would you want to do that? Um, I see that as just another program that we do at the jail. Um, we started back in the spring offering programs. We've never had programs at the jail before. Somewhere, somewhere early part of the summer, maybe June, it occurred to me that I started to see how successful these programs were. And we were really uh, changing up. The behavior in a lot of our inmates. And it occurred to me that at some point I might actually need to uh, make a presentation to a group of people like this to explain why, why we would need to do this. Um, so I actually sat down and thought about what, what would be my argument against somebody when they told me uh, and, I, and I have actually heard this quite a few times. Uh, these people committed a crime, they need to go to jail, do their time, sit there and think about what they did wrong. Um, well, here's my argument to that. Um, the recidivism rate nationally is about 76% after three years. Bedford County, uh, when we started doing programs, I actually looked at our recidivism rate for the last 10 years, and we're at about 72%. Um, that's not to say we're better than the national average, uh, because people come here, commit crimes, they go back to the county they live in, and commit crimes in other counties. So we're probably somewhere around the national average. Um, but here's, here's something I came across. Uh, according to TDOC, 94% of every person incarcerated in the state of Tennessee will reoffend within three years. Uh, I'm sorry, I said that wrong. 94% of people incarcerated in Tennessee will be released in three years. Um, 
And I asked myself, um, what kind of person are we releasing? That is my argument for programs. What kind of person are we releasing back into our community? Because I can tell you, locking somebody up, uh, letting them sit and think about what they did wrong is absolutely not what they're going to do. They're going to think about what they did wrong that got them caught and how not to do that again next time. The person that we want to release back into our community is uh, someone that has recognized what their mistakes were. I got the opportunity to go to a program summit a couple months ago with the state. And I always used to say about 85% of the people in our jail are there because of addiction. People would look at me funny when I said that. But I got to hear an expert speak at that summit, and he actually said the number is more like 95%. So I felt a little vindicated in what I was saying. But I was also a little bit low on my, uh, my numbers. Most of the people in our jail are there because of addiction. I don't care they're either using, selling to support their habit, or they're buying drugs or moving drugs or stealing the whatever, you know, breaking into houses. It all comes back to addiction. And we want to help as many people as we can, but we also have to recognize that we are limited on the number of people that we can help with. Approximately 250 people in our jail, and at any given time we're servicing about 50 of them. Uh, that means there's about 200 people in our jail that we are not, not getting in touch with, you know, necessarily they may get out before we can help them or for whatever reason the charges are too violent. We can't put them in to a like classroom setting. Um, tablets will absolutely help that. Um, not only does it give them something to do to occupy their time, which may seem like a petty thing, but when you take when you lock a person up 23 hours a day, um, with absolutely nothing to do, they're going to think of creative things um, that aren't necessarily in the best interest of the public. Tablets will absolutely give them something to do to occupy their time, but it will also give them access to programs similar to the ones that we're, that we're doing. Um, it, it will give them oper educational opportunities. They can get their GED. There's some college courses on there that they can take. Some vocational training if they want to learn a skill. There are, it, this is more than just giving them the opportunity to watch movies and read books. And that's, you know, yes, they do have that. But it's, it's a lot more than that. So. I have some questions. Go ahead. <clears throat> Lieutenant Cook, I appreciate you being here. I did have the opportunity to speak to uh, to Mr. Prince. We had a good conversation. I had a couple, actually. Um, but I've done a lot of research, so I, I did receive the information that we uh, that we got from the mayor's office. Thank you for that. Also, have done hours, I would say hours, of online research. I've had, uh, again, conversations with our uh, facility. I've had also conversations with another facility in the state, uh, and I've talked to a lot of constituents. So I just I have a few questions. I'll try to be as brief as I can. But... Are you, so this is a for-profit program, correct? Yes. It is. So, in other words, when um, an, an inmate purchases a, a movie or a game, you would in turn make money on that purchase, correct? I don't. You don't, uh, but the jail system does, the, correct? The county does. It's no different than the phone that they currently have. Commissary. Yeah. Commissary. And, I'm, and I'm not, I'm not, this is not interrogation. I just want to just, right. I want to just throw it out there, right? So... Um, so that's 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 obviously a, a concern that I have, and you know, I I, on, I only talk slow. I know a little bit about the IT world. Matter of fact, that's what I do uh, a little bit in, in, in or that's what I do in the private sector. So, have you ever heard of, of rooting a device? No. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, rooting a device is basically taking the device and erasing the user interface in allowing the person to then take over and use the device as they would, as they will. And these, these tablets, although they're locked down and they have specific programs designed specifically for whatever application, 
they're still based on an Android system. And that Android system is very antiquated, which allows it to be even quicker, uh, even, it's even quicker to root that system. Matter of fact, if you go, if you, if you take the tablet that they're proposing that you all receive, and you go on YouTube and you just Google the question, there is a, there is a person that proudly takes you through 42 seconds of how to root that, that, that tablet. So what happens when they root that tablet? Then that person will have every, every ability to use that tablet as an Android device to do whatever they want to do. Whatever they want to do. So for me, that is, that is a concern. So as of November of 22, let me just read you something real quick. So uh, we'll be brief. Uh, use MediaTek SOC platform and highly outdated uh, build of an Android OS system. Uh, both of these common threads allow exploits uh, which make unlocking, finishing, rooting possible. Fairly recent piece of a development known as an MTK. If you don't know what an MTK is, that's something also you should research in regards to a, an Android device. It's capable of ex exploiting, locking down uh, bootloaders, a significant prevent, uh, percentage of MediaTek chipsets, especially, especially the cheap MediaTek chipsets used by securists to manufacture J tablets. It goes on and on and on, but it basically talks about how easy it is to root those tablets. So there, there's one concern there. Um, could I, could I please. Respond to that? Yeah. So, in in what I do for a living, um, I realize, uh, and I'm not I'm not just talking about as a corrections officer, but also just as a program director. Yes, um, I realize that I am uh, working with a significant number of our population who are sociopaths. So, if you don't know exactly what a sociopath is, but they don't follow rules. Mm -hmm. Matter of fact, they, they're, they push the rules, the boundaries, mm -hmm. just, just for the fun of it sometimes. Mm -hmm. So, I always, anytime I'm starting a new program, I always have to weigh the consequences of a person doing something similar to like what you said versus the benefit to the majority of our inmates. I'm that makes sense. It does. So, my response to you, while you you may you may be correct, you know, I'm not an inmate. Okay, um, so the, the tablets are constantly monitored by the vendor. On top of that, the shift sergeant and everybody in the administration will have their own tablet, which we can monitor what they're doing. So, is it possible that a person could do what you just said and go look at porn? Yes, I, I, I'm guessing by what you said that is possible. Um, but if you do something once, um, the thing about a sociopath is they're constantly going to be, they're going to keep trying to get away with what they get away with. So. If, if you do that once, we will maybe not catch you once, but if you do it twice, three times, then we are going to catch you and we're going to revoke your privilege. Um, my question, really what, what it gets down to is the benefits to the population of the jail that I can't currently put into my programs far outweighs the consequences of one person going online and looking at whatever, something that they don't need to be looking at. Um, is that fair? It's fair, but Lieutenant Cook, you're, you're not talking about just one person. We're making speculation on this is a what-if situation. These tablets can be unlocked by any person, in, any person. And, and we're, we're just, we're in this pretend conversation where there may just be one or two, with all due respect, we're in this pretend conversation where there may just be one or two people that unlock it and look at it something that they shouldn't online. But that's not my point. These people can then unlock these tablets and make transactions. You made a comment earlier. You said, you know, they have 23 hours to think. Well, let me, let me kindly say, a tablet will allow them the opportunity to act on those things that they think. That's, that's, that's a number one thing for me. So... I also had a conversation with another uh, jail administrator uh, over in another county. I'll withhold his name for now, but I will say that um, he did mention the good was that they had the law library. That was good. The county, he said the county does get money from, from, from some of the transactions. I think that's interesting. Um, 
he said that they are having huge issues with the inmates breaking the tablets. Uh, it's a huge issue to take care of the, the program. They're taking the batteries out of the tablets. They're attaching them to other devices and running those devices from the battery that's in the tablet. They're easily mis misplaced. Um, they, if he said, he said that it is a privilege that can be taken away uh, and it, uh, it is a privilege that can be taken away. He said, though, and this is this is the biggest thing that I, he said, it's a big responsibility to take care of it. And I quote, if given if given the opportunity again, I would not prior, prioritize this again. If given the opportunity, I would not do it. So that is from somebody that's already, you know, and if you do a little more, you do a little more research online and you read, yeah, there are some counties, there are some states that have enacted it, brought them in, but there are also a lot of folks that have brought them in and, and retracted them. There's another county in Georgia uh, that's made mention that, that they're, 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 they're pulling them out. So, and because in this one county in Tennessee, it's become such an issue that they've, they've taken away, they've taken away the movie privilege, they've taken away the, the game, uh, and, and quite frankly, again, the jail administrator said he wouldn't do it again. So, you know, I've, I've got a little more, I'll save it if I need it for later, but, um, you know, if, if you just look at the common sense, <laughs> thing here you know it's like we have we have we have kids and and these these people are not kids they're they're folks that that have made poor decisions and they're in the jail system for for that reason you know yeah i do believe there should be consequences to that but you know if you look at our society today you you see a lot of times that if you're in a, a store you see a parent give a a, a phone to a, to a to a crying uh, child because to, to make them to make them stop crying. This, this, this to me is absolutely not not a good idea, uh, and I, and I'm against it. Uh, again, I've got more information. I'll be happy to talk with you about that. I don't want to take any more time. I appreciate the time I was given, uh, but again, I've done hours of, of research on this because I wanted to make the right decision. Last thing I'll say again to reiterate, I've talked to many constituents. Uh, even another one today that that brought to attention uh, of another facility in. in uh, Colorado that um, had that pulled them out of their system. Um, I have not talked to a single constituent that's for it, and I made a pledge when I took this position that I was going to do what and be the voice of the people, and that's what I'm doing here. So um, I appreciate your time. Um, first off, I same situation. Every constituent I've talked to is negatively against it. Um, and, and again, I made that same that same idea that I'm not going to support anything that constituents are adamantly against. Uh, the other thing is I want to talk about this rooting. Uh, I have a nine-year-old uh, son, um, and his best friend uh, hacked into the um, Android system at the school system and opened up the emails of the teachers. So the thing is, this is a nine-year-old that did this and did it rather easily. And so the thing is, is this is someone who did it to out of fun for him, but it ended up causing a lot of issues security-wise on the school system. So the thing is, is we have to be very cautious when we go to do things like this, that we don't just make decisions to make it easier for us. Because I think that that, yes, it might make it easier and it might make it a, a one step for the, the inmates that it might be beneficial for them at times. Um, but I think you're opening up a can of worms when you go into this because I think that you might end up with drastically larger problems than you're going to fix. And so when we go to make these decisions, and, um, and unfortunately when we go to talk about these things, we talk about all the great things that people do, and, and we have some great people that work for this county. Um, the thing about it is, though, is, is we have to make decisions that are best for the population that we serve, which are the constituents. And so in this situation, I, I just do not see any way that this is a positive thing for the county. Any other comments? May I say something? Sure. So I, I know it's a, it's a three year contract, right? So if you guys get into it six months from now and you don't like it, I guess you could just take them up and not use them. Is that right? I mean, is there any penalty for that? Or? So, <coughs> there, there is no cost to the county right. anyway. Okay? Um, so, I mean, assuming this is like a really bad idea or mm -hmm. whatever, then yes. Okay. They, they could be taken up and keep them for the life of the contract. Right. The term, right? So. 
I'd like to make a motion to send it to the floor of the commission. Well, we don't have a choice but to send it. We can't make that decision okay. here, so it'll have to go before the commission, favorable, unfavorable, or just recommendation. Favorable. We can't make that decision, you know, one way or the other. It has to go to the commission floor to be voted on by the 18. So, um, Commissioner Henson has made a motion to send it to the commission, correct? Correct. Favorable. With a favorable recommendation. We hear a second. I'll second it to send it to the commission. So, all in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Opposed. Okay. It goes to the commission for them to vote on. All right, any other new business to come before the committee? Any announcements? Y'all be careful with the cold weather coming up. And hope y'all have a Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. May God bless you all. Motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn.